I'm going to say, I, I apologize if they've already been stated. Um, you can't hear the questions asked out in the hallway. So um, looking at the number of trucks that they proposed would be entering the facility and then looking at the GIS map, the aerial map the city has, um, if you look at Industrial Boulevard and you actually look at the site location and you take one of the tractor trailers that's on their property now and you use that measurement, it would look like those line up all the way up to the um, the junction itself, um, which is maybe concerning. Um, I know uh, when Snitzer Northeast was on uh, Industrial Boulevard during some prime traffic times, uh, vehicles were all circled off their property onto the main road itself, and you actually sat there in that line to get onto the property. Um, so I don't know if that had been looked at or if that could be talked about at some point. Um, when they discuss the amount of rail cars that would be inside the enclosed facility, and you take the amount of tons that would be coming in and being transferred into that or recycled, um, I would tend to think that those cars, in order to keep that volume going, even though it's in an enclosed facility to begin with, I tend to bet that they would be moved out onto a rail spur and sit there for transport while new cars were being moved in. So I don't know how that uh, shapes out. Um, as I have a property on Mulberry Street, if I'm there working late at night, the rail company works really late hours. Sometimes you'll hear them blow the train horn to cross and deliver to the valleys at 2.30, 3 a.m. Um, I've recorded it a couple times and you know I take calls from, from neighbors about it. Um, I don't think that the city can control that part of any operation because it's rail. Um, but in order to meet the demand that they're talking about, I would tend to think that that would also be continuing that operation through those late night hours. So those are all just concerns that I would have. Thank you. Thank you.